Hello and welcome back to Europe Universalist 4. I am Lord Foreman here playing at the mighty Japanese Empire. Our name is getting nice and big, so we're getting stronger as the name grows. Um, we just were helping Russia in a war versus Korea. We stole some Korean provinces up here, which we're going to have to convert, uh, completing another one of our trees to invade Manchuria. And uh, we've got about a 13 or so year wait till we can invade the Ming again. We left the Russians fighting Korea, so we'll see how that goes. And uh, we are now able to start converting Confucian lands, because all of our southern lands down here have been converted to Protestant. So we will be working on that for the foreseeable future. I will take the free uh, stability, though. We're getting really close to getting rights of man getting that uh, humanist ideas. Do we still not have an heir? We do have an heir. Oh yeah, it's the child of the reeds or whatever. Tonguan revolutionaries. I'm not worried. Tonggu's got a very strong army. Not very Protestant, though. We'll probably want to send them some aid at some point. But for now, our own conversions are more important. So let's cycle out um, the discipline, because all rebels get our discipline, but they don't get our morale. Uh, we'll do missionary strength, and that should speed up our conversions slightly. Let me see how 1% makes a difference, just because how much it takes to overcome territory and... Uh, non-accepted culture penalties which I'm pretty sure we don't have any cultures we can accept actually we could we could do Korean at some point might do Korean because I think of all the um, groups in the area the Koreans the next largest one the Ming the China is too scattered um, let's do some trade power. Because why not? At this point, spending the money, it really is not going to have too big of an impact. But there we go. We have six innovation and we are on to humanist ideas. Specifically, I want to get the religious unity because that will put us over 100 and get rid of the very annoying corruption and um, unrest that we uh, from that won't get us exactly to 100 yet, but probably by the time we can afford it the missionaries will have converted enough One can hope at least Whew. Hopefully this will be a semi-quiet episode after all these wars, the last several ones, I'm a little tired of the wars. Especially wars that I can only fight every like 15, 13 years. It'd be nice if I could fight continuous wars, because then we could actually, you know, expand more. But with this potential coalition of the Ottomans joining anything against me, I really, I can't do anything. If I was over here, one of the first goals I would have made would be to crush the Ottomans. And then I would have been in great shape, but... Yeah. We broke one of the two world regional powers, but we just can't get to the next one, really. Not easily. I mean, we could probably still win a war versus it, but... It would be rough. I don't really want to. I'd probably have to call in all my allies, and they wouldn't do too well, either. Nope. Yep. Two years for humanist ideas, unless something changes. Luckily our ruler's just. That's actually helping a lot with some of this unrest. I'm going to say that 
Russia is going to definitely be able to beat Korea. It's just going to matter of time, really. Um, our colonists are still over 20-something percent, so we're still going to keep converting with them. I am, however, going to do Korean as an accepted culture. Because Korea is all one culture, which is very interesting. I'm surprised it doesn't have two, three cultures. Because there was three kingdoms in Korea, so... Although one was up here more. It's just, just interesting. They're a rather oddly um, unified region in the game. I mean, the next closest one is probably Polish or English. The rest of them are all broken up into smaller groups, usually, or development wise. I mean, I'm not counting Tibet because the development up here is terrible. It's just oddly interesting. Even Japan has more cultures than Korea. I mean, to be fair, Japan is more developed than Korea, but... It still is a difference. Okay, um... I guess... Let's work up this left side here, so I don't have to keep sending armies into the desert to subdue rebels. Because that will be progress, not to have to be losing guys to attrition in deserts. In all honesty, I should probably just be fabricating claims on China now. Because it would make it easier to take land. So I will start with that. Of course, if we're lucky, we'll get some of those. Let's end this empire events that'll give us reasonably large areas of claims in China. Those are particularly nice ones when you're trying to conquer China. There we go. Should be back to a reasonable position of stability. So, since we're back to a position of stability, let's get some upgraded world ports because. Why not? Oh, I can't upgrade it. Oh, it's not in a state. Ah, that makes sense. Um, okay, uh, let's do this then. Already have an upgraded one there. Uh, let's do Brunei. Oh, we don't have enough money. Okay, well, the more money we can keep from flowing to Europe, the better off we are. 73. Huh. Considering we're also collecting tons of uh, money in actual Japan, despite a penalty. I'm happy with that. More importantly, the Ming are have been beggared from losing control of their trade. Which happened historically, didn't it? With the whole Boxer Rebellion and everything else. Stripping them of their Trading powers. Okay. Humanist next month. It will push us to 100. Nope. We're going to fire that guy. Because we do not want a non-Japanese uh, non heir right now. If, I mean, Kyushin, which was our starting culture, is still 14% of our development. So... It's pretty important. Mm, I'll take 3,000 gold, please. <laughs> there we go. Just build some of the plantations and other stuff because at this point, we just have excess money usually. So, might as well get us more money so we can support more armies. We are up to almost 658,000 troops if we wanted to. There we go. Humanist ideas. Isn't it lovely? 100. 
less trouble. Stability is somewhat more ours. The next one will also be handy, the national unrest, but the big one is separatism, is strong. Yeah, that's probably the regions I'm converting, isn't it? Yeah. No, it actually isn't. They're somewhere else. Somewhere I don't know exactly where they are. Okay, regardless, conversion is going really well. We don't actually have any triggered modifiers. I don't even know if... Uh... Yeah, what if we're Jewish or Christian? But we'd in order to get other missionaries, we'd have to invade our way all the way over to, you know, like Mecca or something to pick up a free uh, missionary, which obviously we're not going to do. Varanasi up here doesn't give us a benefit, if I remember. Uh, where is Varanasi? I know where Varanasi is. There it is. Yeah, we'd have to be Hindu and controlling it to get a benefit. Which, obviously, we are not. But we do have literally all of the bonuses in an age. Which is pretty good. Wish there was something you could spend additional splendor on, though. Or maybe it giving you a modifier the more you get, because we're going to have an excess amount and we can't do anything with it. Maybe the more splendor you have over it gives like 1% morale per every 100 or something, so that would be a benefit. Because we still got a good portion of the game to go. We still got another, what, 53 years or so? Oh, that's convenient. I don't even have to move my armies. They already crushed the rebels for me. I can just sit back and watch. Um, just looking at all my policies. Visionary thinkers. Humanist in quality. Interesting. That seems very weak. I suppose the prestige decay is worth more. Uh. Some of the uh, policies you can enact are not very useful, I've found. Um, let's convert in... So let's do that. Unless something really weird happens, I'll probably let Tibet survive. I mean, actually... Mm. You know, if I really wanted to invade China faster, I could probably attack Tibet and stuff and force China to defend them, but then I wouldn't be charging China directly, so I wouldn't be able to take as much land. So it's probably actually worth waiting. Now that I think about it. 140. I don't think we have any more admin efficiency we can pick up. Nope. So it's all down to seeing if we can how much land we can take from them in the next war or two honestly if we end the game with just Japan and having conquered the Ming and probably some of Korea um, I'll be happy with the game because we've, we've done pretty well considering uh, we had some rather Rather of a rough start getting outside of Japan, what with the, what, three Ming Wars or something. Plus the Ottomans colonizing Indonesia. That slowed us down quite a bit. I really want to do a world conquest someday, someday soon. I haven't bothered to do it yet. I need to find the right country and the right position to do it. And I just haven't found it yet. At least to my mind. Uh, we can hire a leader. On the other hand, there's that new update coming out for Europe sometime this year, which will give Prussia some new missions. So it might be fun playing as them when that comes out, seeing if I can do a world conquest with them. Probably not the best one to try it with, though, considering how uh, small they start out. But 
Huh. People would probably watch it, and I think that's what matters. Some Stan just Sistan just appeared again. As a republic. You know what? I'm curious. Let's go check what type of governance we have. Um, we've got quite a smattering of republic uh, theocracies up here. Look at all these. Huh. I don't remember seeing this many theocracies. Very few republics. Mecklenburg. Switzerland. Venice. Who apparently got kicked out of Venice. Yao. Interesting. Not a lot of them. A lot of, a lot of theocracies. I suppose Utrecht, Trayer, and Maine start out with them, so I guess that makes sense. And they're the vast majority of that huge area of theocracies. Actually, now I'm curious. What religion are they? They're all reformed. Ooh. Are they all reformed, or is it just some of them? Oh, Trayer's still Catholic. And France is still Holy Roman Emperor. Of course they are. There's no other... I don't think there's any other qualifying Catholic states in the HRA. Makes it easier to win elections. Um, okay. That's being done. That's being done. So we're going to get to the farthest reaches of China and convert it. I don't know if we'll bother conquering Tibet. Maybe we will. We'll see where we're at. Won't be hard. Once China is gone, um, sorry, the Ming, once the Ming are gone, it'll be a lot easier. Should be pretty much a matter of just walking around and conquering things at that point. The only downsides I see is if we pick a fight with uh, French or the Ottomans. I don't know. Maybe I, I wonder if we'll get the tributary states if we remove the Ming. Will all their tributary states automatically become ours? Because that could be confusing. Because <laughs> the last thing we want is Mandate of Heaven. The last thing we want. That would destroy our empire if we did that. Be fun to watch, though. 3,300 development ourselves. At this point, our growth to conquering the Ming is pretty much inevitable. But with our golden age, the last till 1806, so we still got a 38 years of it. I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be pretty good. I love how even at this point I'm still concerned over how much uh, admin power I have, despite getting 14 a month. It's just so valuable and so needed in these last wars. I don't think we have any other... Do we have any other state bonuses? We do have one more. Tech 31, we get five more states. Uh, yep, military idea. We should have quality ideas done, and then we'll be really unstoppable. We'll have like 117 discipline and about 10 in morale. That's pretty good. Um, you know what? I'm bored. We're not going to annex any of these subjects, so I'm just going to finish this off as much as we can. Uh, we do not have 75 trade in Malacca. That will need to be corrected. We need to dominate this trade node. So. How do we do it? I think the easiest way is just build uh, trade stuff everywhere. Either that or we temporarily shift our trade node back to Japan. Oh, we actually have rebels down here. Ooh. Um, we'll use this army.
Oh, he's actually some pirates. Yeah, we may just I may just swap it back to Japan for a month to complete that mission. We'll see. Um, regardless of that fact, we are done for this episode. What is this? Theravada Buddhism has reappeared in China. Cool. So that's it for this episode, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye for now.